Hey everyone, Matt Hedder here and welcome back to another Guardian Tales video. Today we'll be going through the shop and I'll be presenting you a guide in which what to buy from the shop, what to avoid, and how to utilize your gems and other currencies properly. So let's begin. Within packages, there will occasionally be things such as epic hammers and option chain stones, and the general consens consensus is to just buy them if you have the available gems and there isn't you know an immediate summoning banner that requires your gems it's often best to just pick them up they'll assist your progression quite a bit especially considering that most of the things that are often in here are rare commodities next up we have resources resources there's nothing else you could buy here the daily the um i believe daily free gold it's nice it's not a large amount but it's free and it's nice right you want to be picking up the stamina you want to be picking up the stamina refreshes at least once a day if you can afford it and twice a day when you actually need it for something purposeful such as evolution dungeons and you always want to get it twice a day if there's a good evolution dungeon and you always want to get it twice a day if there's a evolution dungeon right up out at the moment next up is hero growth this has pretty much one of the most important things here and that is a hero crystal consumption don't spend hero crystals on evolution stones. Never buy these. Never, never, never. It's so not worth it. You can get dream evolution stones through missions, random events. Um, some logins will give you them. However, never buy these with hero crystals. You'll be lacking hero crystals later when you direly need them for max limit breaking your characters, which give a lot of stats and boost to your characters. So don't waste them here. Simply, it's free to spend your star pieces on the high grade evolution boxes, but a little spoiler here, skip like 10-15 seconds if you don't want to hear it. For a World 17 release, there might be a uh, coffee grinder consumption of star stones, so you might be able to buy some coffee grinders with star pieces. Just be aware of that. Equipment wise, you don't want to buy any of these, you know, 1.8 million to 2 million items. They're not worth it unless like you're really mid to end game and you're just struggling to complete the collection for them. Don't bother. Do buy out all these low tier weapons. They're easy collection bonuses and some of them aren't actually too bad. It's just for example, blade shield if you need a DPS shield for a character or even angel necklace if you don't have ocean earring. Amethyst earring isn't all too great, but it's not bad. The knight greeting little princess card and the knight accompanying princess card are both really good cards to have. So make sure to pick those up as well. Daily, you can get the strengthening hammer. It's perfectly fine, super cheap, good to have. Hero costumes. Generally, just buy what you like. However, if you're trying to really min-max and there's no banner that needs your attention, feel free to buy the costumes that have stat bonuses, right? Here, as you can see, this is part of a collection enjoying hobbies. Having all four of these costumes will grant me a 0.5% collection bonus increase, and it's nice to have that. So do, do be aware that this exists. Equipment costumes are somewhat similar right they will provide you with collection bonuses if there is a certain collection or they'll just be really cool cosmetics okay if you like them buy them but do prioritize summoning banners before them daily costume sets this is actually a really really cool event right now that really really make a lot of these super cheap for collection bonuses some of these do have you know a world reward costume for part of their collection bonus that you don't get as part of the bundle so do be aware of that if you don't immediately get the collection bonus but if you have the spare gems and you're not hardcore saving for the upcoming spoilers world 17 update don't bother Super costumes, you'll just get these threads by getting duplicate super costumes. I recommend saving your threads until, you know, you're down to a couple of super costumes left and you don't really have an option of just, you know, simply waiting it out. I think your thread should be a completely last resort unless, unless there's a costume that you really, really like. In that case, go get it, man. No one's holding you back. Purple coins, I recommend going in the order of stamina and coffee grinders. That's pretty much it. You'll get enough coins to get everything, but... Stamina and coffee grinders are your primary priority. Save them, buy them only when, you know, there's an event boost, such as, you know, two times evolution dungeon. But outside of that, just save them, okay? Everything else you can just buy whenever. It's not really going to affect much or change much. Mileage-wise, you're going to be wanting to spending your magic medals on... This is going to be a lot of scrolling here. But you're going to be wanting to spend your magic medals on the monthly epic exclusive equipment box, the legend exclusive equipment box, and the option chain stones. You can buy the epic exclusive equipment box for 300 magic medals each month once. 
right? And I recommend you do it. It's super cheap and it pretty much will give you any random exclusive weapon in the game. The Legend exclusive equipment box, it's a hundred magic metal each for each box and you can buy it five times each month and each box will give you a random legendary exclusive weapon. Autumn Chain Stones are, I believe, 30 each and you can buy it 10 times each month. And this is also super worth, but I recommend prioritizing the Epic Exclusive Equipment Box over all else. It's just so good, and you get a pretty much a free exclusive weapon considering how cheap it is. Mileage-wise, you're going to really want your mileage to be your last resort. Never spend mileage on characters. It's such a, you know silly decision even if you know you really want the character it's just not worth it because it's much easier to get a featured hero than it is to get a featured weapon on a banner in addition to you wanting to primarily summon for hero banners because you'll get hero crystals which are significantly harder to farm than magic metals which you'll get from weapon banners just go for heroes and try to mileage weapons but Generally, you're going to want to summon for the hero first and go for the weapon after if you can, but mileage, use it as a last resort. Battle medals. Now, as a new player, you have a couple of options. You have, I think, between the Mad Panda Brooch and Minotaur Shield. The reason why I'm not seeing Minotaur's necklace is because there's budget options that, you know, are technically worse than this. For example, gold pocket watch and stuff. But this is, it's going to be a difficult role to get what you want and especially to get it to a point where you want it. It's going to be quite a few option chain stones and quite a few option lock stones. So don't bother with this. Use golden pocket watch. It will get the job done perfectly fine. Mad Panda Brooch is relatively difficult to roll, but it's super easy because you really only care about two stats here. And that's the defense percentage, the base defense. Well, that it's three stats, but base defense, defense percentage and HP. That's really all you care about. The skill damage, it's whatever. The attack is, it literally doesn't matter. Shield increase, if it's 5%, who cares? It's not significant. Damage reduction is also whatever. You mainly want the defense, defense percentage, and the HP percentage. Shield is a lot cheaper, and it's also a really nice pickup because it's a great shield. You get 10% HP and 6% defense. Do go for these two first. You can pick up Minotaur necklaces as you go. Don't focus on max limit breaking one of them before you have, you know, copies of each. Costumes are going to be, if you want them, go for them, right? However, I think it's fine to prioritize the accessories you need first. Don't buy the option lock stones unless you need them. I personally think they're quite, quite overpriced. Some people might tell you otherwise, but I think they're really overpriced considering that you option you don't consume as many option lock stones as you consume option chain stones. The costumes, like I've said, are pretty much just personal based. If you like them, sure, some of them, you know, might give you like a uh, knowledge boost and stuff, but it's if you like them, you like them. If you don't, you don't. It's not a big deal. And you're not going to want to farm Mare Rift as a new player or even as a mid game player. I don't think it's really worth it. Captain's Mare Shield is a nice shield for future princes. But once again, it's a pain in the absolute, you know, uh, have and hold to re roll. It's not worth it for a new player. And this is the biggest new player bait ever that will, you know, hurt you quite a bit. And that is rolling on mirror accessories. Don't do it. They're not worth it. They require way, way too much investment for what they give you. Bottle cap wise, the costumes are once again really, really nice, especially, you know, the Emperor two handed sword and the reigning justice. But don't go for them unless you just want to grind out for them. If you want, go for it. It's, it's cool. They look really nice. Your monthly focus is going to be on legendary awakening stones because you'll get 12 a month. That's the most important thing here. And the high grade awakening stones, mid grade and the low grade. You want to clear all of these out as fast as you can. Aegis shield, like I've said, is a good shield, but it's a bit difficult to roll. And it's also really expensive. If you want to go out of your way and spend, you know, hours farming for it, go for it. But I don't think it's worth it. Other shields will get the job done perfectly fine. Relics, it's not an early or even mid game thing. It's a really mid to late game thing where you'll be focusing on them. Huntsman of Mementos is a really fun one. Always buy, you know, the bi-weekly Legendary Awakening Stones and the bi-weekly Princesses Edicts. When you start out, there will be one-time purchases like Golden Pocket Watch, Shark Shooter, Sniper Goggles. I recommend just picking these up as fast as you can. You'll also be able to buy nine Legendary Awakening Tones. Pick that up as fast as you can. And 15 Princesses Edicts. Pick that up as fast as you can. Those will be there and they're one-time purchasables, but they're so good. They're so good. I don't think any of these accessories are really worth it. Dusk Ring, Epic Sources, Treasures. These are just not that good. If you're gonna go for something, Judge's Shield is actually a really nice DPS shield. 
but it's once again not really worth it considering you're going to need to roll a lot and max limit breaking is going to be a really really big pain these cards are actually really good so if you need them for the specific element it's absolutely worth going for them but your main focus is going to be getting your bi-weekly legendary awakening stones your bi-weekly princesses edicts clearing off the one-time purchases and then afterwards I recommend just getting Stellar Essence because Ascended Craig and then Ascended Karina are such good characters. You can also save up for the Hero Reset Stone if you want to reset a hero, but get the cards also. They're one-time purchasables. They don't renew or refresh, so you can pick them up anytime you want. But yeah, that will be it for the shop. I don't think there's much else in the shop now. There are certain events, but for those, I'll make separate videos. And yeah, if you enjoyed it, um, you know what? No, I'm not going to say. If you enjoyed the video, you'll know what to do, okay? But join the community Discord, and I'll see you all later. Hope